there's this part where they're like, <laughs> there's a golf ball. Welcome back to 13 Days of Horror. If you have been enjoying the series, please give it a thumbs up. Today is going to be very interesting because we're talking about Dead of Night. This is a film from 1945 and it's also a British production. The film currently has a 7.7 .7 on IMDb, which is the highest rating score of the films, maybe in my whole of 13 Days of Horror, but definitely thus far. The film today, although obviously it's a classic, I don't know too much about it. I like to go in as blind as possible, but it is about a man who senses impending doom as his half-remembered reoccurring dream turns into reality as the guests at a country house encourage him to stay as they take turns telling supernatural tales. So obviously this is anthology, I'm assuming, something like that. Uh, and it is important to say that I am watching this on BFI only because uh, this is a British production, but the distributor from America thought that the film ran too long. At the moment, <laughs> it's one hour and 17 minutes. That was too long back in 1945, I guess. Uh, and they took out two segments from the film, so you may want to check what one you're watching and the length of it, because apparently there's a you know an ending, a climax scene, and it doesn't make sense because there's two random people there that don't make sense to the you know they were involved in the two scenes that were cut. Uh, so I'm excited to jump into this one. I know it has a little creepy doll, which I'm very much into, and yeah, it's rated really highly. I'm just keen to see what it's all about. Dead of Night should be interesting where this one falls on the genre map as well. Let's check it out. Okay guys, I just finished Dead of Night. <laughs> that was so fun and it was really interesting because I was trying to think as I went what segments I liked the most and uh, if you've seen the film, the segment about golf, which usually would not be my pick, was so funny. I was actually laughing out loud watching that and I think it's my favorite. Um, as I said, the film is, it's kind of an, I guess it is an anthology, but it's got to do with all the story. Like they're really tightly connected. It's an interesting kind of take on a lot of similar kind of stories that we've heard over the years, like ghost stories or really stories with coincidences uh, that are really interesting. Some of them, some of them are full on ghost stories. The film is about a man who is called upon for a job at this country manor. And when he arrives, he walks into the room and everything feels very similar. He strikes up a conversation about this but there is a doctor in the room who tries to disprove his theory and says you know it's just in your head and then everyone takes turns telling stories about strange things that have happened to them that can't be explained. There's a huge psychological element to the film because uh, it's you know is it in your head or is it real and it really does play with that aspect but then again there are full-on ghost stories as I said uh, especially the golf one it's so funny they have these <laughs> It's like a ghost and golf. I don't want to get too much into it. You definitely have to watch that one. It's so good. Uh, but there's this part where they're like, <laughs> there's a golf ball and they're doing the special effects by like using this almost, I think it's like a pin light to make it look like this golf ball. And it's just hilarious. It's hilarious in like the special effects cause they're so goofy, but it's actually hilarious the comedic aspect as well. Like I think it's quite funny. Um, this ghost trying to figure out how to disappear. I would say the rest of the stories are quite enchanting and they really do play off, um, you know, normal ghost stories that we all know, like thinking someone was in the room who, you know, died years ago and things like that. So it's kind of, yeah, it's quite classical obviously. And it even says at the start of the film, uh, that, you know, none of these characters are based on anything. And I think that's because it derives from a lot of old school ghost tales. My other favorite one definitely had to be the dummy one, which I think this film is known for. All of the pictures I've seen have the dummy in it, um, the ventriloquist doll. And 
it is kind of creepy, but again, it's one of those stories that we've kind of heard, in, or I've, I don't know where I've picked that one up before, but I've definitely seen a version of it done before, but I think it was still quite well done. I do want to mention the website that I watched this on, you do have to have a UK credit card or a membership, uh, but I do believe it's available in some countries, just not mine. On Amazon, if you have Canopy, which I believe is for students and uh, teachers in America, you can watch it there. And you can also watch it in Shutter in some countries, but I couldn't figure out what countries. And the version that I did watch went for one hour and 43 minutes. So the one hour and 17 minute version must be the short version. I really enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I did. And especially with this, it had a slower kind of start, but when it got into the segments and it was just really charming and people say this is a Christmas movie, believe it or not, uh, but it's definitely a horror. Uh, so I'm gonna give this one a seven out of 10 for personal. A scare score, I'm gonna give it like a three. Um, some of the things are a little bit intense. There's like definitely some murder going on, some murder mystery, um, but you know, nothing really scary by any means. It is 1945 and it is like a drama horror. I do think that old school movies can be really scary, um, but when they're, you know, dramatized, uh, especially, you know, them telling a story, I don't think it is as scary. Questionable, I would love to know what is the oldest film you've ever seen that was terrifying. I think the oldest looking film I've ever seen that was terrifying was Begotten. Uh, I know it's from 1990, but uh, obviously it looks a lot older and it's made to look a lot older. And I think that is completely creepy. So I do think that there are films, especially really early films that can be really scary because of the imagery. And originality, I'm gonna give it a four out of 10. I don't think it's original really at all, but I will give the four just for the golf segment, which was awesome. But of course we know this is not all. We need to head down to the bullseye and the genre map to see where this lands. Okay, this is gonna be one of the easiest genre maps I've done thus far, which is very exciting. I can actually stick to what I've created. Uh, this one, I, I did say it has psychological aspects, but I do think it more lies in the paranormal. It's like a ghost story, although it does have some elements. Um, I would definitely say is more of a paranormal one. Um, so I'm gonna put this guy, yeah, just overlapping a tiny bit, but more on the paranormal side, obviously. Dead of Night is dead easy. <laughs> that was exciting, because I feel very confident about that one. I'd love to know how far over you think it belongs with a psychological aspect, if you have seen the film. And now it's time for our bullseye, if it hits the mark. And this is not based on my personal score, this is based on the film's intent and kind of trying to figure out the film's intent. Obviously, I go into these as blind as possible and you know, you'd, I don't really know the director's intent for this one, uh, but it's just a conversation starter as everything I do on this channel is. Uh, so it doesn't hit the mark. Uh, so this film kind of set off to be a drama horror um, and I believe it was the studios, the pr production studios who made this. This was their first horror movie. Um, and I think that they did pretty well with that. I think uh, putting anthology together and really having all those different types of ghost stories and psychological stories, I think did really well. Um, so I'm gonna say that this hit the mark pretty pretty bang on, to be honest. I think uh, they set out to make like a creepy story and for 1945, I think that they did pretty good at it. <laughs> so I'm gonna give them, I'm gonna put it on the bullseye, just a little bit under, just in case we have someone. I'm hoping someone's gonna go right there, but we don't know. We really don't know until we finish the 13 days. I watched them in order, and if you didn't know, all of these films are films I have not seen before, so I have no preconceived notions, except for when we get to play Christmas, um, about where that's gonna go. Maybe that's gonna go over here, we'll see. Uh, so I'm really excited so far. We've got a really good mark going on. Everyone's on the bullseye so far. That's all we can hope for. I can't wait for tomorrow. Tomorrow's Borgman, which I'm so excited to see. If you know me, I'm into cult films and I believe this is cultish. I'm so glad you guys have been loving the series too. So thank you so much for all your lovely comments so far. I'll see you tomorrow for another 13 days of horror. Bye. Bye.